So in the last video, we created this Blazor server app inside Ratson Blazor Studio, where we display some real-time data in a Ratson data grid, and we actually get everything to work. But I also talked about that inside our services folder, that we could go and create a service just for the real-time data, so that we actually didn't have to use the company DB service that is scaffolded by Ratson Blazor Studio. And the reason we would like to create another service is that if this company DB service somehow get overridden by some changes in Ransom Blazor Studio, then all the code that we created in there will be deleted. So what I will show in this video is how you set up the extra service file. And it's actually not that hard because we have already written all the code that we need. We actually just have to copy and paste it over in the new service file. And then inside this index.razor file, we have to call it the right way. So first of all, let's go and write I click the services and say new file. I then want to call it real time employee service. And let's just say okay. And we actually also have to specify the extension of the file. So let's just go and delete this again and then create a new file again. So real time employee data service.cs like this and say okay. So first of all, we want to say that it is a class that has the name real time employee data service. And then we can take the open and closing brackets. We also want to make the class public. And let's make some extra space because we also want to specify the namespace, which in this case is the real time data dot services. And then also a open bracket and a closing bracket that has to be underneath the class. So we also want to create a constructor for this class. So let's go and say public and then the name of the class. And then we want to have to close it off. So what we can actually do now is just to go to our company DB service class. And then let's go and copy all these usings. And we actually also want to have the models with us. So let's just go and copy that and paste it to the real-time employee data service. And then we can actually go and delete a lot of these, I think, to Signal R, because as default, we don't want to use Signal R. We also don't want to use the hops, the data, and the SQL table dependency. So we can just go and delete this. And that will actually also help us to find all the code that we need to go and copy and paste to the new file. Because as you can see here, we have the IHOP context that we just want to actually just clip this so that we can take it to the new file. And then we want to paste it into the class. And then let's go back. And then we can take all the dependency injections that we make. So let's just clip this also, the IHOP context and the iService scope factory. And let's insert it to the new constructor that we have created. And if we go back again, we can actually take the iService scope factory, the connection string, and also this dependency. So the SQL table dependency. And remember to take this Rasm syntax with us. So again, just clip this out and let's copy and paste it into the new file. And again, let's go back. And then we want to take all the things that is inside the constructor. And in this case, it's actually almost all of it except the two lines where we set the context and the navigation manager. So let's just take all this code and clip it out and put it again inside our constructor. And then I think finally we can go back and then take the changed method, also clip this and put it inside our new file. So now that we have the class set up, we can go to our index.razor file and let's go to the split view. So down in the code part, we actually want to inject the class that we just created, the real-time employee data service. So we will just say inject and then real-time employee data service and also give the variable a name. And as you can see, it cannot find it right now. And that's because we don't use the namespace. So we will just go and say real-time data and then the services because that was the namespace to this file. And as you can see, we still get this oh no. And that is simply because in our program.cs that we haven't added our new file to a scope. So you can really just go in here and then just copy one line and paste it in and then include the service that we have. So real time employee 
data service. And then again, we want to say that it should use the data time data dot services, just like this. And then of course, if we're doing it like this, we also have to say services down here. So just like this, which then actually do that we don't have to use this. So let's just delete that again. So now if we go back to the index file, we can see that we no longer get the oh no. And then let's try to go and run this to see if it actually works. So it actually doesn't work, but when I look at the code, I can see that we also need to implement entity framework to our new service file and that actually makes sense because down here at our context when we try to call the database for a new set of data for the employees then we say as no tracking and this is actually an entity framework feature so let's go and implement entity framework to the service file so again to make it easy we can actually just go to the company db service file and then just copy and paste this line the microsoft entity framework call so copy this and put it into our new file and then let's try to see if we need anything else so we do get the app running without any errors and then let's try and test if it still works so that we still get some real-time data so i just opened my microsoft sql server management studio and let's try to edit john so instead of john 100 let's just say john and you can see it still works but now we actually moved it to a separate service and if we just try to take a look at the code to see why it still works like this then it is actually just because we inject the real-time as employee service right here and when we inject it like this then the constructor will run inside the real-time employee service and if we go to that service then we can see inside our constructor that if this runs then it will listen to changes inside the employees table inside our database so that is also why it has really nothing to do with the other service that is created because this is just a separate listener that is going to listen to the database and if there is some changes then it will go and refresh the employees and because we're using signal r then again we're just pushing it to all the clients that is actually connected to the employees hub and listening to the refresh employees so if they listen to that then they will get the new employees that we then can set to the employees variable inside this hub connection where we say on and then we get the employees inside our refresh employees and then just set the employees as curable to the employees that is being displayed on the page and then again update the view so we actually can see the changes so i hope this was a little optimization idea that you can implement in your real-time application so thank you for watching and have a nice day bye